What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 28 of the Having Report. The price of Bitcoin is about 9,800 US dollars. There's approximately 1,453 days left until the next Bitcoin halving. We're in very exciting territory right now as the third Bitcoin halving just occurred on May 11th. Today, we're diving into an interview with Charles Nader, who is doing something very unique in the cryptocurrency space. He and his team are building an ecosystem offering free basic healthcare in exchange for medical data, integrated with a crypto economy to reward users for sharing their health data and to securely store that data on their life chain network. With the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, I'm really excited to talk to Charles, who is the CEO and founder of Doc.com Telemedicine Services. Thanks for coming on to the show today, Charles. So the first question I like to ask people is, what is your Bitcoin story? As in, how did you come across it? And what makes you passionate about the underlying blockchain technology? Well, the first time I found out about Bitcoin was in 2013. I was reviewing a car form actually and they had a finance section in the car forum so there was a lot of traders doing forex trading talking about it in the finance section of the forum and someone posted on a thread that was talking about forex trading and the gains he was making he was a student at Tulane University I remember that and someone else posted well no one is gaining so much as the people who are buying Bitcoin and back then that was 2013 that was the first time I ever heard of Bitcoin. And I was like, well, well, what is Bitcoin? So, you know, I was already in kind of that, that I was in the phase. I was doing a lot of research on, on uh, trading and finances, the whole financial crisis. I had this big obsession with the 2008 financial crisis and the why it happened. And just my phases that I kind of obsess, you know, just do hobby research. And that piqued my attention when I w- was reading. He, he posted something like 30%. There was a 30% gain in the last week. And I remember thinking about like, well, what is Bitcoin? I started researching it and I found out about it that day and I spent basically the rest of the day reading up all I could on it. It was really interesting and a huge eye opener. I, I had, you know, I was already pretty involved in, you know, I've always been a tech fanatic and that was just a big eye opener for me that this was even possible. So that was the first time I, I learned about Bitcoin. Then the first time I bought Bitcoin was about a year later in 2014. Uh, I bought my first Bitcoins when they were around $170. At the time I remember my brother telling me, hey, Hey, you know, that's it's, uh, doesn't look like a good investment, but I was like, well, I'll just put a little bit of money into it. And I still have most of those Bitcoins to this day. It started us on the path of learning about crypto in general and the possibilities of it. So, you know, I, I kept on monitoring the whole space. I wanted to do things in it. And by that time we had launched our company. So it was connecting the dots on how our model kind of converged with innovation of cryptocurrencies, how we could create a component that made our business model better better so that's how i first found out about it 2013 2000 i actually posted on my twitter if you look on my twitter i posted back in 2013 people should learn about bitcoin it it may change the world i posted something like that on twitter in 2013 that's when i first was kind of got obsessed into cryptocurrencies that was a really good time to get into it i mean there's a lot of people that have been in for a couple years yet but haven't even experienced the, the you know the first having now bitcoin is usually complex enough for most people in how it works how would you explain to people what doc.com is to somebody who's never heard of it and how how you utilize the blockchain you know when you talk about blockchain in general i always tell people it's a very open kind of space it's kind of like saying the internet in many ways you know the internet is not only used for websites use it for apps services tons of things and i kind of feel like it's like that in a sense you know blockchain can be used in many different ways and the way we use it in doc.com we use it for primarily for three things one is to be transparent about our users who actually complete the use of our services so when someone has speaks to a doctor or a psychologist when that actual medical assistance or psychological assistance is completed we reward the user with mtc and that stays on the that's that's registered on the blockchain that transaction is registered on the blockchain it adds like another layer of transparency to the world that's publicly verifiable of people using our services that's something that uh that services that are similar in telemedicine don't have the other aspect is it has simultaneously you have this economic reward you can you can give someone it's uh very significant in that sense i think some people don't appreciate the significance of that but the fact that you can change that cryptocurrency to other currencies very easily and at your own will is is extremely 
extremely important because if you look at loyalty programs, for example, uh, uh, that credit cards have or airlines, you can't do that. You know, the points, if you don't use them, they just get lost. So I, I see it as a big improvement in that sense too. And the third reason is our project is designed to store the medical and psychological data that we compile through our medical assistances and through our psychological assistances. We want to be transparent about that. We want the actual currency to be backed by something real that has value. And medical data has value. So we pay people for their data through the method that I just described. And we also, in our next stage, are planning to store the raw data in our own blockchain called the life chain. And that's to offer additional transparency as to what data is being compiled from the actual services that is used for analytics for our analytics product that we sell to the healthcare industry. Those are the three reasons. Transparency, the economic advantages of this huge innovation, and the additional transparency for the way data is being used. Can I probe you a little bit more about the economic reward, uh, the second point you made, and how users are rewarded and if doctors are rewarded in medical token currency, if that's the way they're paid right now and how that works? Sure. Our doctors and our psychologists are employees of doc.com they work uh, full shifts with us and it's it's designed this way so we can homologate the service doctors usually even though they may have the same medical training they have their own styles of doing things and when you treat people under this format telemedicine you know with doc.com you just download the app register with a telephone or email number or, or email but your name and your date of birth those three things there's no passwords or anything you literally press a button and it connects you through video chat there's no forms to fill out there's no nothing to fill out so the economic aspect of someone actually using the service and getting rewarded for their data our services we have a free version that most of our users use a free version that's something we do but our doctors are employees of the company they actually get paid by us salaries they get paid competitive salaries uh, same thing with psychologists and they have bonuses in in MTC vesting plans like all doc.com employees everyone has vesting plans in MTC so those are actually publicly viewable on the blockchain you can view our MTC contract and see all the vesting plans that are in there but as far as what MTC is used for it's used for the three things that I specified you know transparency rewarding our users getting paid for data but our doctors are employees of the company and we have a B2B and B2C business so we have contracts in the US with track phone wireless and all track phone brands in Latin America with Boopa Insurance, Eden Red, many other companies, companies from the pharmaceutical industry. So this all, all the sales that happen that are based on the data analytics that we create through our services, part of those funds goes directly into repurchasing MTC from the markets and it's put back into the treasury to be, again, redistributed to the users who use our services as a form of payment for their data. And we we put those metrics up on our site. You can see the, the hashes from all the users. You can see the hashes from us, from our purchases from the exchanges. You can see those transactions in, in the, the amount of people that are going through or using our services. You can see those metrics on our site. You just go to doc.com. They're right on there. From an economic standpoint, we it's a real crypto economy. I think most people have to remember the fundamentals of an economy. What is truly an economy? I mean, if you ask the average person, you know, it's hard for them to explain, but in essence, what you're doing is providing a platform where service, something that's of need to the population is being given. And there's a labor on one side and a payment on the other side. And it's just a cycle that that, that goes on. So those are the fundamentals of an economy, the simplest very simplified form of an economy and you can put your own currency into that cycle and use it in multiple countries without having to worry about pegging it or using local currencies. So there are many benefits. You know, it's not just one benefit. There's many benefits that people still don't realize. I like to use a comparison of Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services, when they first started with their service, it was that space was very new. Many people didn't believe in the cloud, the cloud services space, and they they had, a, they had a huge advantage because they saw that it could potentially become something huge and they had a monopoly for about seven years because they were the first comers into the, that space. I see it the same way with cryptocurrencies. If you use them the right way, the benefits outweigh all the criticism and all the, the image that cryptocurrencies have in many places because it is a technology and, and it's it, it, it will be used inevitably for the benefit of products or services and the people. So we want it to be first in that we saw many benefits with our model 
combining those two from an economic standpoint and also from many other standpoints as far as transparency and uh, as a business case. Just jumping back to the part where you guys keep yourself, your economic model sustainable, part of that is repurchasing the token MTC. Now with a, f- a fluctuating cryptocurrency, now does that cause issues for a company if you have to keep on buying that token? It causes issues if you're focused on trying to maximize your profit by purchasing the the coin you know what well our model is basically we charge if you look at if you look at the contract when someone uh, gets rewarded there's two there's two actually there's two variables there one variable is the amount that the user is being rewarded and the other variables the amount doc.com is being rewarded for for providing the service so those two things are transparent people can see how much we keep our model is based on fees on both ends so we keep a fee when we purchase and we keep a fee when we reward so it's very very transparent. So all that you have to do really is regulate the amount of money or the amount of cryptocurrency that you reward people with. It wouldn't be logical for us to reward people more than it than is being generated through data sales. So so that's something that we have the ability to regulate, but all the transactions are still transparent on the blockchain. So it's just basically designating uh, as the crypto economy grows, as more users come in, how much each user is getting paid, what's the market equivalent of that is as far as uh, fiat currencies and, and saying, all right, you got paid, you got a free service, you're getting paid two to five cents for your data. It's better than getting nothing. It's transparent. It, it's accumulative. It incentivizes people to take care of themselves by using our services. And you can transfer them to another family member or a friend. It's done that way. So I would say, no, it doesn't. Uh, as long as you do it the right way, it doesn't have negative benefits for the company. It can only add to it. Yeah, thanks for explaining that for me. And you know, a lot of businesses have been in impacted with the ongoing pandemic right now has not being able to congregate with your team been a factor in the be- development and doc in the past few months no, no we actually have uh, done a lot of improvements because of this it's, it's kind of been a very interesting time these past few months you know first of all we offer telemedicine services and telepsychology services in multiple countries. We had plans to expand to the U.S. in a slow, at a slower pace. We originally had planned to be at this point in three or four states. Right now, we're already in 19 states. That was a consequence of the crisis, the COVID crisis. So, in a way, for us, we've benefited because we've we've been able to provide our services to more people. On the other hand, doing things remotely has also, I mean, showed, for example, me at a personal level, I'm amazed at the amount of productivity we, we've been able to have uh, working remotely. And that's changed our perspective on how we're going to operate from here on forwards. Uh, we're definitely going to do a lot more remote work. We're actually making it optional for people to go to the offices. Like, the, for example, the dev team, they really like to work from the office. They like that they like to be in the same space and work together. Uh, they think uh, they're more creative in that space, being there physically. But you know, many of the other things uh, we can still manage remotely, and we've been doing a great job at it. So this is going to be a big change for Doc and probably many other companies that are technology companies that can take advantage of, of remote working. Yeah, it's amazing. We're seeing all types of companies that were never really, never really had much tech integrated. Now they're being forced to kind of change over and do things in a different way. So very interesting times, that's for sure. I, I see that. I was watching your last AMA on YouTube and I saw you were talking about a little bit about that doc just launched a new website and maybe just tell us the differences with the new website. Yeah, well, the new website is in over 40 languages. It's designed to rank us higher on, I mean, for doc.com is an amazing name. We're very proud to, to be doc.com and to, to have such a name like that. So it's very universal and it's very linked to what we do. And part of that is making our site rank well. So right now it's in 40 over 40 languages people from all over the world can see it and the next element the next component of it that's being uh, implemented is a text question system where you can ask questions to doctors and over in all the languages that are available on doc.com in text format and you get you get them answered it's a free service that we have but it's designed to have that functionality and also increase our users for the crypto economy and for our telemedicine services 
So it's kind of like a first step. If you don't have the app, you can do a text question. If you don't want to speak directly face to face to a doctor through video chat, you can text the question there. And those questions get start adding up. They get indexed. So it helps us rank worldwide and uh, for medical questions and psychological questions. That's what it's designed to do right now. It was launched with the new languages. And it's something that we keep on optimizing and making better and adding things to it, uh, just like our other products. So those are the main differences with doc.com right now. Also, we're adding, you know, we're adding different things like a merchandise. We have a merchandise section. We're adding products to it. Just little things that we've learned from the community that, you know, we see as a benefit to to doc.com. We have a, a very strong following and uh, we listen to our community quite a bit. And this is one of just one of the many things that we, we had plans to do. But, you know, I mean, there's been so much going on. We've been growing pretty fast and it's been a lot of work to do. If we see that we can improve on anything, if we can add value to doc.com, well, we do that. You know, we try to prioritize things that do them rapidly. But the site was a big one for us just because the, the domain doc.com is so important to us as a company. Now, you mentioned you were launched in 40 languages. What are some of the challenges in trying to make your service available in so many different nations and so many different cultures? Have you used our service yet? What state are you in? No, I'm in Canada, actually. So oh, I, you're, I, hopefully we'll be in Canada soon. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you can use Canada as an example. Canada already has some telemedicine regulation. So one of the things, the reason we're not all over the world already is because of regulations. We're in 24 countries right now, uh, 19 states in U.S. And using the U.S. as an example, there are regulations per state, you know, that change uh, in regards to telemedicine. So that's the first challenge, really. After that, well, finding finding doctors and psychologists is the next step. But that's something that basically is not it's not really a problem. It's just a matter of time. There's there's more than enough uh, doctors and psychologists that want to work with telemedicine in general that we can find them in all the necessary languages. But uh, those are basically the two hardest challenges. From a commercial perspective, we do quite well. I mean, we're we're growing, signing more contracts with a very uh, a variety of, of companies. You know, like I mentioned, TrackPhone, it's a telecommunications company. They offer, they're the largest prepaid phone plan provider in the world. They have 24 million users in the US and they offer their users our services. And we also have uh, contracts with insurance companies. So it's the same scenario in other regions. So if we go to, for example, France or uh, Africa or the Middle East, you can see that you have the markets are, are available there too for us. And, you know, we're working fast and expanding to other regions. We've done quite a good job at expanding rapidly throughout Latin America and then the U.S. So right now we're focused on expanding to other parts too. But uh, really, it's just uh, like any company. It takes a lot of work. You know, if you really want to help people or have an impact, you know, it takes a lot of work. I'm constantly working. We're all working. But it's also because we love what we do. You know, it's it really is. If you read the reviews on the App Store and on the place where people have used our service, right there, it gives you a signal that we're, we're on the right path. You know, people get helped at zero cost to them, which is amazing. And we've We've helped a lot of people and, you know, saved some lives and, and changed the trajectory of some people that are, had depression or anxiety, uh, just a lot of things. So, you know, it's always worth it. Whatever whatever barrier or difficulty we encounter, you know, we always push through it somehow. And it's uh, it's a new, it's also a new world. Digital health is really, I think the 2020s are going to be a new era for digital health in many aspects. It's going to transform people's lives. I definitely agree with you. And there's going to be a, a lot of big changes coming. And I think blockchain chain is going to be a big part of that. Uh, I'm obviously very passionate about what, what blockchain can do for the world and Bitcoin and, and other cryptocurrencies. Definitely, definitely. It's a wonderful, amazing world that we're that we have ahead of us. And just there's there's a lot of things to fix in it as usual, but there's a lot of exciting things to do also. So, you know, cryptocurrencies, blockchain in general is a uh, one of the, you know, if I were to tell any any person starting out, uh, I would say hey, get into that, you know, there's so much to do in it. There's so much benefit to society in that space that can come from it. So there's a lot of cool things that are going to happen that are already happening in many ways. I wish we knew who Satoshi was. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I unfortunately don't think we'll ever really find out. And if somebody tells you or if there's a big revelation, there'll still be questions about it. I feel like I visited Mr. McAfee, John McAfee, uh, some months ago, and he told me he knew who Satoshi was, told me is uh, the reasons why he knew. And, you know, there's a lot of speculation out there. But either way, no matter what it is, I still see it as whoever did it, whoever, if it's one person or if it's multiple, thank you. It's it's we should all thank them for it. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing to have created this kind of technology and future for for humanity and from an economic standpoint, such an important thing. Yeah, and I did see that when John McAfee was tweeting about revealing who Satoshi was, and I was all excited to see. And then he didn't end up tweeting it out for legal reasons, I guess. Yeah, he uh, he told me it was I don't remember the name, but it's one of the top people who were in the original group of Bitcoin developers, and uh, who's now a very successful very very low-key guy that lives in um he lives in europe you know just uh one of these financial tax havens i mean that makes that makes sense (laughs) he said he's got billions in bitcoin and made even more and just lives a good life and focused on his research and whatnot just a researcher type of guy smart guy but that's what he told me who knows it'd be nice if if, you know satoshi was alive and well and saw the growth of this whole thing that he started yeah yeah do you think bitcoin will always be king no i don't I don't think I think it will be for a while but definitely not always it's just the fact that uh, blockchain is so versatile in many ways and the models you can create using blockchain technology the economic models it's just you know you're, you're the, the limits are your own imagination so it's bound to happen that eventually something better will come come along and I already see some of those things happening I think it really is mostly based on the the use the utility of it or the usability of it how many people are actually using Bitcoin what's the, it's the most widely used coin right now so that may change in the future for various reasons. I mean, people have to be incentivized to use that currency. That's why I always think of the fundamentals of economics. You know, why do people like to live in the U.S. or any first world country? Well, it's because they have the basis to run a good economy on. They have good roads. They have good healthcare systems, good uh, security. They have all these elements that provide a good platform to run a good economy on. And, you know, Bitcoin is running on this global scale. Uh, there may be other things that will incentivize people to use more other cryptocurrencies eventually. So I don't think it'll always be the king, but it'll always be one of the top ones just because it's the first, you know, the genesis of this whole world. Yeah, I'm a, I'm kind of torn on that. I really feel like obviously Bitcoin has a massive head start and kind of drives the rest of the industry, but very hard to pick which coin that I see out there now someday overcoming it. Just a definitely a hard question <laughs> to, to answer. And we, we, we just went through the, the third Bitcoin halving. Do you have bull runs speculation like a lot of people do in this space right now? Yeah, I do. I mean, just look at what's happening as far as what companies are are being created and what and how Bitcoin is increasing in use. I think recently Reddit announced that they they will be able there you can do or promote or use cryptocurrencies within Reddit now. So as time goes on, you just see more and more things happening and it's not really like there's an urgency of we have to give this to the people because of this reason. It's just something people see as logical to to take to use the benefit Benefits of these technologies. So I definitely see a bull run coming, and it's it's almost inevitable. Right now, the market is mostly based on hype. You look at many of the top 100 coins; they have no users, they have no uh, no actual product. It's just purely based on hype, which it's incredible too. But then again, it's a young market still. You know, the whole cryptocurrency space is a young market, and it, it fluctuates dramatically. It's incredible how much it fluctuates. But you know, because of that volatility that it has, it's inevitable. I think for it to have a uh, for there to be a bull run who knows when it will be hopefully it'll happen soon but uh that's you know dependent on many other factors the point is it's definitely going to come at some point just because of the fact that more and more people are using cryptocurrencies now and it just increases over time there's a steady growth as far as how many people are coming into the space that you can measure from years back and that alone will make it it'll cause a bull run at some point so i'm very pro crypto i've always loved it it's been something that in the past over five years has really become a, a like a deep part of myself as as to the way I think about money and uh, monetary theory and the benefits to the world and transparency. And there's just so many benefits to it that it's inevitable.
little bit people are going to catch on at some point. I mean, it's already happening, but Mike Novogratz has a great video on YouTube of one of his talks. It's called The Herd is Coming, and he describes it as you get the initial creators, then you get the early adopters, and then you get the herd or the masses starting to adopt it, and it starts rising, 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 and we're still kind of in that right before the curve starts to rise phase. You know, there's still no uh, killer apps that are growing that fast. I mean, we consider ourselves a killer app in the cryptocurrency space because each user that uses our services gets MTC. But, you know, it's still in many ways, in many other industries also, we're still in those early stages. We're still right on that, right before that curve starts to go up. So that will happen at some point, you know, if we can get more, we can get cryptocurrency into more people's hands. It's happening. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you, Charles. I wanted to ask if there's anything that you want to add or if there's anything maybe we can look forward to in the upcoming months or year with Doc. Yeah, we're, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say if you haven't tried Doc, please try it out. You can, we're available in 19 states in the US. You can you can see where we're available on doc.com and all of Latin America except Brazil right now. You just download the app, press a button and talk to a doctor. There are no things to fill out. It's just a quick process. If someone needs help or if someone needs to talk to a psychologist, you know, give it a shot. You can talk to someone in the privacy of your own home. It's really a great service because of that, you know, and the simplicity of use is really important. So I would say try it out and know that that is the basis for the crypto economy that's implemented into doc so right now we started with that the next stage is we're going to expand to more users and to more states in the u.s and also expand to europe and the middle east and we're also launching our veterinary service doc pets so you you can now speak to a doctor and a psychologist through video chat completely for free for the first time and you will be able to speak to a veterinarian also so if you have pets you know there's a lot of people that they take care more of their pets than themselves <laughs> so you know it's also a service that we're adding to doc and all these services and whatever we do in some way or another is involved and directly intertwined with the cryptocurrency and blockchain technology in the way that we use it so it's just something that it takes time to grow we're growing but the, those are the next stages that we're going into we're uh, expanding to more states in the u.s hopefully we'll be in canada also in this process we've already been looking into canada they they told us about the national uh, mental health day we wanted to do something during that time period I forget what it is uh i'm sure you're aware of it but i know it's like a national really important thing that happens in canada but we're also expanding to europe and the middle east we already have that's already in the works we're already working with some people to set it up so that's next and we're also launching our, our vet service doc pets for anyone who has uh pets or animals in case they need some sort of uh, medical attention or help and, and you know that's basically our mission to provide free basic health care for the world we're on that path it's a lot of work ahead of us, but we, we love what we do. So. Well, I definitely appreciate what you're doing, Charles, you and your team. I think it can be a much more sustainable system and you know can possibly work alongside or, or pose as an alternative to the current system that we have in, in play right now. It's got a lot of potential. And yeah, do you want to just tell us where we can learn more or where to follow you? Sure. You can you can download doc.com on doc.com or just by searching doc.com on the Play Store or in the App Store. My Twitter handle is Charles Nader. That's N-A-D-E-R. And I'm on Instagram as Chuck Nader. And I post on both Twitter and Instagram frequently updates on our expansion, on visits with government officials or you know, different people that I have, just general updates. And you can also find us on our Telegram chat, our community, Telegram community. We also have a Reddit community and Facebook page, but our Telegram community is the most active community. We're under doc.com. You can find us there and uh, talk with our community members. We also, I, I frequently go on there and, and speak to everyone, to our community members and interact with them. And uh, on YouTube, you can view our AMAs, just search doc.com or my name, Charles Nader. And, uh, you can look at the AMAs to get an idea of our progress. Well, Charles, I really appreciate your time and I will certainly be following along and I'll be looking forward to Canadian integration one day. Well, I definitely appreciate it, Brad. Thank you so much for inviting me on your podcast. I really like what you're doing and I think we're jointly in a great time and great time to benefit and to enjoy these exciting times. So it's great that you're getting the word out about cryptocurrencies in general. And uh, thanks a lot for inviting me to your podcast. I'm Brad Mines, and a special thanks to Charles Nader for coming on to episode 28 of the Havering Report. Please smash that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to check out the show notes below.